Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. Another day, another sordid British royal family scandal. Now it sets its sights on Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall and her alleged plot to poison Prince George against his own family once he ascends the throne. So what are the recent new insights? Catherine, Princess of Wales has purportedly discovered a plan so dastardly that it could bring down royalty everywhere. But is this the real ground reality? Surely she's not trying to break up young Prince George from his family? Or is this simply, as again, it sometimes seems every day when you cover the House of Windsor, just another chapter in what appears to be a saga without an end? Recapping this storyline, its aftermaths, and the audacity attributed to dear Camilla for pulling such a stunt. It reads like something out of historical drama, that Camilla, queen consort-elect, is engaged in some kind of dark work to win Prince George round against his flesh and blood. Not the royal family as we know it today. Admittedly, if there is one thing that this many years of Camilla has taught us, it is that nothing remotely controversial passes her by. It is suggested that Camilla has been working behind the scenes on William and may be hoping to use her feminine charms one day as a sort of insurance policy, to guarantee herself priority in the pecking order, or at least a place for her and assorted relatives with all royal knickknacks. It is a frankly preposterous idea of Machiavellian chicanery, as though Camilla was setting herself up to be the Lady Macbeth of our times. If in fact, these allegations are true, the question that has to be asked is why? Where on earth would Camilla get caught up in such a diabolical, if I may say so myself, plan? There are others, however, who think that this is an effort to back up her position in the royal family, especially in light of troubled assets from a few quarters. He is even seen as a means to prize Prince George from the close ties of his immediate family and allow him to set up in an environment directly advantageous to her. Just then came the aforesaid Catherine, Princess of Wales who learnt things that would appear by an information she found out had procured for her own sordid snooping. Catherine has a motherly side to her. She is that type of protector, especially when it comes to her young ones. Of course any mother who suspects for one second that her son would be nudged toward the path, that should ring an alarm bell. Has this concern come from a genuine worry about the well-being of her child? Or is this yet another calculated risk on her part? Indeed, for a Catherine who has constantly been one step closer to becoming the future king, she may well see this as her chance to legitimize her own status by sweeping away any perceived irritants which stand in the way of royal family unity. If Catherine really does have the goods on Camilla, she might benefit from laying it all out. It provides cover for her son but it also reinforces her place in the firm as the only figure willing to go there, by defending its future at any price. If Camilla is a part of this setup, that smacks of some deep-rooted insecurity about where she fits in the royal family. Despite being known as HRH the Queen Consort, Camilla has always been plagued by an image issue. She is considered an outsider by most and the woman who destroyed one half of the Charles-slash-Diana fairy tale marriage by many. Her wholly deserved reputation was slightly better, but she still remained the woman who stole a husband. As for whether this leak might be an attempt on Camilla's part to secure a seat at the table with other generations in power, some claim that if she turns Prince George against his own kin, Camilla will have back up positioning herself as a puppeteer to the future king. But if they are indeed what she is using for her motivations, then it could be a bridge too far. The entire nation would likely revolt against her if they believed she was exploiting a child to secure an heir as well. The British public might have a habit of kicking the monarchy in the teeth, but when it comes to criticism aimed at members of the family themselves, especially one so obviously damaged as Harry and William, they'd be up in arms. Accusations that Camilla was putting her or in to try and manipulate or undermining what she regards as future charges won't fly. If accurate, the narrative has the potential to cause deep rifts within the royal household. Divided by public feuds, rival agendas, and visions of the future of the house with two Kansans even more determined to become speaker in this Congress or the next. 
If there are more stories like this story to come and Camilla has been trying to dictate what happens where Prince George is concerned, trust and manipulation have a rendered a distasteful remake within one formerly happy family. You could then argue, however, that this might actually be even worse for the plot. It could well work as a final straw to turn the remaining family against that kind of thing. Is Catherine bringing the family together? Uniting against an invisible enemy if Camilla is out here working against the family WWE Royal Rumble style, that could spark a sort of united we stand against infidelity response to remind everyone in how unified this kingdom will operate around where exactly it stands on things like Will and Kate holding the crown next. That's the question will this solidarity finally destroy this family or bring it even closer together? The royal family has navigated many storms over the years. But, this particular brand of plot, a simplistic power play against the future movers and shakers, might just be its toughest yet. But the actions Camilla is alleged to have taken reveal much more serious and sinister intentions. This is of course if those rumors are true, gossip says that she is not happy with where she is at all. Sounds like she is trying to gain even more control and power over other members of the family. Was she the puppet master of this scene? If part of the plan is for her inevitable will during those twilight, at best, years to be manipulated, behind every throne there's a ruler wielding as much might as she can muster, even at Buckingham Palace. Good God, if she does she's danger public enemy number one. And Camilla has fought and clawed her way out of the dark valley of stinking public obliquity. If she was also acting in opposition of a family member, and possibly even a child, it could endanger the facade they spent years building. It would simply confirm existing prejudices against her as a manipulative, self-serving figure and deepen the divide between her and the family in the court of public opinion. None of this can or should be taken to the media. A national newspaper apparently first disclosed the story of a Camilla's bid to corner Prince Charles and press coverage has continued ever since. A classic case of much ado about nothing, or is there any content behind it? The firm, and like tabloid royal adjacents, we mean this in the nicest way possible, seriously, just watch the crown, will inspire think piece why takes that delve into all its drama. Sensationalism? Absolutely. A queen consort plotting against a future king, even if more in fiction than in fact, is undeniably appealing. Then why does this tale simply refuse to die? if not only because all great stories do and the potential interest makes it an attractive target for big thoughts, what if this convoluted hurly-burly of a story is actually true? Yet it does raise troubling implications for the royal family dynamic and prospectively tells you how low some could sink to justify their place within it. How well this one goes over hinges entirely on how much it surprises the general public. Since the 2006 disaster, Camilla has worked anyone neglect or sleep deprivation she might have been subjected to tirelessly rebuilding her society punchline reputation towards that of royal family nearly member. However, the British public has a long memory for this sort of thing and if rumors are true they cannot exactly be leveled at Camilla, in which case she could inevitably end up on what would have been her father-in-law's plate. If she turns into someone who was prepared to play her child as a messaging pawn all of the evenings of being viewed as perhaps Charles's only trusted presence round about that would all be water under the bridge. And this would return her to the role many believed she once inhabited as a power-hungry puppet master. Camilla is playing with fire here. She may consider it a long-term strategic play, but she's playing with fire. She only has to slip up and she can be cast out of the spotlight as well as her family, which is something that she worked hard for many years to fit into. Or perhaps Camilla is just more devious than the rest of the royal family put together in which case maybe she and Charles are playing a far cleverer game. Alternatively, is everyone else playing checkers and she is the queen? Her every move provides mere proof of her manipulative ways, or so it seems at any rate. This obscenely she will issue for it to put. Nonetheless, this dichotomy is not sustainable as wits will only get you so far. There comes a point where cleverness becomes insolence, and insolence turns into hubris, and as any student of ancient Greek drama knows, hubris gets you killed. 
If Camilla thinks she has a role to play in the future of the monarchy, she should not overreach. Not with the British public and not with the firm, the men and women in grey suits. So, how could this all impact change within the royal family going forward? The family, if there is any truth at all in these claims, may have a lot of healing to do. She would they would need to clearly establish roles, duties, and boundaries to ensure that manipulating the team in this way again was not possible. To some extent, then, Catherine was dragging the whole show into focus, a warning that the future of this institution depended on all working together with one goal in sight. Whether the family will answer this call to its values, or whether they have just caused more ignorance and further fracture in their midst is yet to be seen. The more I play it through, the more I get why people are so Peter Level obsessed with Catherine. A fan writes The Majesty of Catherine, an ongoing tribute to the British royal family calendar by Ding Jo Marrow, Zero Let Me Show You in the series The Ever-Changing Epic of the FR at Era Freightful December 26. Stray the Majesty of Katrina Fiend Tribute Ariel Resad Est British Rumor, Filmin, Hashtag Shaz One Bookmark, Login to Booklet, Open So Far Shall All M Another New Hero, Hashtag Behind the Palace Walls. Now we know that behind the scenes, Catherine, Princess of Wales has been the gentle yet unswerving hand shaping the destiny of the monarchy. It has now emerged that behind the scenes, Catherine has been quietly masterminding a grand plan of her own an ultra-high-stakes strategy to tackle the biggest issues currently facing the royal family. Amidst the media hype at this alarming finding, it has become evident. Sure, Catherine had to be a good little princess, but she's also a pragmatist who knows the ins and outs of royalty in 2019. The depth of character, intelligence, and commitment we've all long suspected they have channeled through Hillary's work as revealed today in ways that the public has never before seen. Here is an in-depth look at what exactly sets Catherine's secret plan apart and how her actions are potentially saving the British monarchy. At the center of this bombshell is Catherine's fearless and brazen plan to tackle the threatening issues endangering both the steadiness and longevity of the British monarchy. However, unlike many of her blue-blooded counterparts who tend to be fine with the way things have always been done, Catherine realizes that it's an entirely new age for today's royals and that means evolving so as to stay relevant. While the high-stakes strategy is risky, it is not a conservative one. According to reports, Catherine is believed to taken up a controversial program of actions designed to tackle the issues head-on, working more closely with the public, broadening royal duties and reflecting contemporary Britain. Catherine, in this sense, places her foot toward the human truth, a move necessarily bold and indispensable when traditional institutions have thoroughly removed elsewhere. She understands that if the monarchy is to survive, then it must not act like an artifact of history. The monarchy is a living institution and should be able to adjust from time to time, in response to the public that it serves. So it really is a case of Catherine has tirelessly done the same and even more, and had to make sacrifices in her personal life the same as Pike, thus rendering her groundbreaking efforts both inspirational. She was not one of those dunk-kicking, self-congratulatory types, playing it close to the vest in a high-stakes game that even seasoned players found exhausting. In order to do so, she has had to establish a major change in her public persona and private life. But this significant is a testament to duty towards the throne as well and responsibility over personal desires. It only goes to show exactly how powerful, not simply versatile, Catherine may be. She has shown that she is able to take criticism and withstand internal conflict and when necessary make difficult decisions for the party's well-being. This is significant given she, like Meghan, comes under daily pressure and criticism. Still, she soldiers on, carrying the heavy weight that is inherent in the service to an institution as ancient and far-reaching as the nation-state it embodies and simultaneously reimagines an affirmative inheritance for a nation of grandchildren. Her public sacrifices are easy to see. While Catherine is said to have taken on more work, she maintains a strict balance with her royal duties and family life, even dabbling in peacemaking within the notoriously strained family. Leading with grace and unparalleled determination in the process of doing all this, is in fact what makes her a leader not just in a title but a true leader by example. 
The thing with this secret strategy employed by Catherine is that one of the strongest aspects of it all is how she goes on to build strategic alliances within and outside the royal family. There is more than one person required to shift things on a deep level, in this case she knows and understands that. And gradually, she has nurtured a matrix of friends who share her vision for the royal family in the 21st century. It is not only the power, influence, and patronage. When Catherine approaches the teams closest to the action and stands shoulder to shoulder with their key players, she ensures that her efforts are also properly supported. That, folks, is how you play the game. The important thing to realize in this approach is that Catherine refused to allow the expertise, resources, and connections of others around her prevent her vision as well. It also indicates that Catherine is in it for the long bow. She is not simply reacting to the immediate crisis but also positioning herself down the road. Her alliances are future-focused, though provoking given the ever-evolving role of the monarchy in society and how it stays relevant in an age where things move quickly. So, reports are that Catherine wants a whole series of reforms and initiatives to change how it all would work almost the biggest revolution in the way royal duties and public engagements are done since 1997. There is a very clear sense in which she is looking to modernize the monarchy and make sure that it stays contemporary. We could see a change in emphasis on to issues that resonate with the current public mood such as mental health, climate sustainability, and social justice, areas where Catherine has a proven track record of involvement. That might also involve reinventing some of the stuffier royal traditions and coming up with fresh ways to interact with the public, particularly the millions of younger people who may otherwise be less interested in monarchy. But perhaps Catherine is less about shattering with the past and more about reanimating it. She thinks the monarchy has its origins as a power, but knows that it also needs to change in order to survive. In doing so, she is dragging the royal family out of the realm of tradition and nostalgia into the 21st century. Naturally, the media is all over the exposure of Catherine's secret plan its juicy gossip. Enter an upstart royal, young, smart, and slavishly loyal to the firm. Catherine has always been a vision of elegance and poise, but this revelation proves that she can be very strategic, a keen royal willing to play chess with her status to protect the institution she holds dear. Her aides and commentators have wasted no time in dissecting her strategy, speculating on how it could affect the monarchy, now or later. The result was almost unanimously positive. Catherine has been applauded by many for being so forward-thinking and the whiff of common sense, appearing to know that in order for the monarchy to live on it must change. An overnight success, and understandably so as people love Catherine so much. Meghan may have captured the nation's imagination, but for Catherine her reach is international. She will show the people from 53 Commonwealth countries that their monarchy isn't only an aged institution of tradition and pomp, but that these monarchs are modern, relatable and a connected family who are ready to serve. It has only served to make her more mysterious and sought after. Catherine has become a more attractive public figure. Others were surprised at the hidden work she was doing behind closed doors. Previously viewed as simply the dutiful wife, she is now being portrayed as a palace crusader, taking on great risks for the institution. What we did see, however, is something the public have seen very little of, Catherine as a strong woman, a survivor and someone with quiet conviction that knows the difference between right and wrong. This is an important moment because it marks a turning point in the way Catherine is seen by the people. She is no longer relegated to the role of dutiful wife or empty-mouthed figurehead. The future forward, visionary, and proactive monarch. And for this, the people are giving charm and loyalty not only to her work but also to royal family. The royal family's official response has been muted but her behavior could still help change the course for a reign which is encountering an extraordinary number of internal debates and reassessments. The absence of snubbing or distancing by anyone in the household is predicate to her value and relevance, which validates strategy. It has certainly increased the value of Catherine in the royal household. But she's also viewed as a key player in tackling what lies ahead.
her voice will be more influential in determining and discussing such decisions going forward. This could in fact mark the start of a new chapter for the royal family, with Catherine going to be playing a considerable role in shaping and guiding its trajectory ahead. In light of this discovery, it is also photoclear that Catherine represents on more than just a ceremonial level. An intelligent, visionary and go-getter lady with an absolute dedication to her work in the space of being selflessly serving. Her secret move is a bold but unavoidable strategy. The monarchy is at a pivot point and the brothers agree significant change is necessary. Catherine, with that creative edge she has, will chip in too. Catherine, for all intents and purposes, is the future of the monarchy, her grace, empathy and silent strength make her essential to the survival of an institution that must become diverse and stale if it doesn't accept change. She knows that her institution is not an eternal, but a fire to be kindled afresh at every point in time and preserved. Her behavior illustrates that she studies her job and cares enough to genuinely try to do something. Catherine's vision for the monarchy is traditional, but she also brings it into 21st century. She dreams of the royal family as a powerful symbol of continuity that remains capable of serving the society it represents in a useful and relevant manner. Catherine is the perfect person to walk that balance. The future we want to craft is one that represents, includes, and leverages all of our voices we all deserve better. She knows that the monarchy needs to reflect the society it serves, and she is determined to be certain it does so in a real way. For a romantic country like Spain, this is an appealing vision that could well safeguard the monarchy for a good many years to come. As we come to settle this latest revelation, it's only gaining her the royal family hero identity she deserves. How she did this and her covert efforts to protect the monarchy was a unique and magnificent act of leadership that is having wide repercussions. Catherine is bold and a risk-taker, willing to give of herself and disrupt the system on behalf of an institution she loves. She understands perfectly well what it takes for the institution of the monarchy to endure, which is why she will break with tradition if she has to. She is not just a princess an instrument of change, a warrior for improvement and the future queen consort of England. Catherine is a symbol that monarchy can change, and Mary Queen of Scots is Exhibit A in its inevitable demise. As she represents the future of an institution that any other creatures might regard as hopelessly anachronistic, her hidden master plan could be paramount in its survival. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.